So welcome to my allotment. Today I'm going to be showing you the jobs I'm doing in my allotment in the month of July. So if you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden, my allotment, and also my home kitchen. Now, July is a really, really busy month. And the great thing about July is there's actually quite a lot of things to pick as well. So I'm going to be showing you what you can be sowing, what you can be picking, you know, other jobs you need to do, really exciting stuff. So one of the things I'll be doing this month is we get something called the, the June drop where most of the um, apple and pear trees drop what they don't need but they don't always drop everything they don't need. Now four on that truss would be too many so what I'll be doing is I'll be removing some of the weaker ones so hopefully they swell out and I'll get more decent fruits. As you can see on this one there's only two and that's perfectly okay um, but when you've got as many as four all clumped together there's a chance that they won't all swell out and they'll all fight for the nutrition so I'll start thinning those out this month. Um, rhubarb, obviously we've been harvesting our rhubarb for some time now um, but there's still plenty there that you can keep harvesting if you want to. So as we move down, raspberries, as you can see I've already started picking my raspberries this morning. Um, I don't know if you can see in there but there are quite a lot still to pick so before I go I'm going to make sure I do that. Obviously lots of things you can be doing with raspberries, you can eat them just as they are. Jam, I'm thinking of making a pavlova or something like that or a cake and um, there's lots of lots of things you can do. You can put them in gin, you can put them in vodka, um, you can share them with your friends and family but I'm definitely going to have lots of raspberries. So as we move down the blackberries aren't quite there yet but as you can see there's going to be a bumper crop of blackberries absolutely tons and tons and tons of them so the gooseberries um i've got these netted because i think i've said before that the birds will have them if you don't they are perfectly good to pick or i can leave them on a little bit longer to um sweeten up a bit more the choice is yours when it comes to things like that I've sown all my leeks, so now it's just a case of taking care of them. So if you've not sown your leeks, um, now's a good time to do it. These are temporarily covered because I only just put these in, but I'm going to be lifting that off really soon because they've been in for a little while. The birds shouldn't be able to easily get them out, or the squirrels, we're not sure which. And um, that'll be coming off. My onions are not the best looking onions in the world, but they're not terrible. If you see any that have gone to seed, you just nip them off don't leave them on there these oh I pulled that one out with it that's obviously not a very good one but you just nick the tops off um I need two hands for that so you just nip the tops off those ones won't keep so well if they've gone to seed but they're still perfectly good eating so these are the ones I put in in March these onions here that I put in um last year in about October I'll be I'll be digging those so when you see my harvest video these will be part of it. If you've not um, sown plenty of seeds already, I sowed these about a week ago, so there's plenty of time for you to be sowing. I've got lettuces in there, I've got beetroot, and I've got spring onions. And um, you could put some more carrots in, you can put some more, lots of things you can be putting in. Fennel, Florence fennel can go in. And um, there's lots of things you could be sowing there. Radishes, so radishes could go in there. So as you can see, they have already started to germinate some of them. I bet that's the lettuces just through the middle there. They're usually one of the first to germinate. They look like lettuces to me. So I will be covering those because um, the birds sometimes go for them when they've only just germinated. So these are my carrots. Now, I did two rows here and they didn't germinate really well and I don't know why. So what I've done is rather than disturb the ground, and re-sow in the gaps. I've just done. Uh, I've just done it through the middle, and hopefully I'll get enough. I, I, or I cover with Enviromesh for my carrots. It's really worth the investment because I get far less carrot fly. Buy a piece of Enviromesh. It might be a little bit expensive, but it lasts for years and years and years. So when you get it, make sure you cut it to a, a size that's really usable. Um, you know be careful with it because it costs a lot of money. I will put a link in the description if you want to get yourself in some Enviro Mesh because I use my Enviro Mesh for two things. I use it for my carrots and I use it for my broccoli, uh, sorry my um, kale because I want to keep the white fly off of them um, and I get the best kale ever now because I use Enviro Mesh with very very little white fly. So I've got some other things underneath here. I've got lettuce, beetroot, 
I've got carrots in there, I've got parsley and a little bit of fennel. This doesn't actually need to be covered now, but unfortunately my potatoes are growing into this row. So I've literally just left it on there so that they've got a bit of space and not being crushed. And I will have to trim those potatoes back. Trimming my potatoes back is not something I would normally do, but I won't cause it too much harm if I just take some of the side leaves off just to give this a little bit more light. But everything underneath, it seems to be doing really, really well, um, which is absolutely fantastic. So my potatoes are doing fantastically and I will be digging some of those in the next week or two. Um, they flowered a good few weeks ago, my, my um, Charlotte, so I would anticipate that I should have potatoes under there. So if you've not already put out squashes um, and courgettes and pumpkins, then, then do get them out now. Um, if you've not started any of your own off, it might just be worth getting them from a garden centre or something. I've got a lot more over there. So if you've not already put your runner beans in yet, you could obviously sow some now or just pick some up from a garden centre already started off. As you can see, mine are doing quite well. And um, what I'm doing now is, because obviously mine have been in, been in a while, some of mine have automatically just spiralled themselves around the cane, but some of them need, need a little bit more coaxing. And if you see one like that, you just grab it and you just do it in an anti-clockwise direction. Let me put my basket down. I'll to do it. just grab them and just help to try and twizzle them round. You very rarely need to tie them with, with a bit of string but occasionally you'll get a temperamental one and I will but generally once you start suggesting it go up it will just do it in, itself so I'll go around those I've got a few straggling around here and I'll go and twizzle those around so the dahlias are doing really well so some a way of really boosting those is to give them a little bit of tomato feed if you've got any and you're growing any yourself I'll obviously be able to start cutting those really soon. So here's the bulk of my squashes and courgettes. Um, so, um, like I said, um, if you haven't got any already, it's probably worth picking some up already started off. Um, really, really fantastic. I've got a little courgette there. I could technically cut that off, so that's very exciting. I mean, I literally came up here a couple of days ago and there really wasn't a lot going on, so it does all come on really, really quickly. Um, and you could feed these as well, something like you know tomato feed you could feed them with. Um, I've got my own comfrey feed that I can feed them with. Um, but they do often, they're quite hungry plants, so it is definitely worth feeding them. So I've got my spinach over here. I could probably take this cover off now. I think the birds will probably leave it alone. They're not quite so delicate enough. Um, in here I've got my um, purple sprouting and my brussels they're coming on absolutely fantastically what i'm doing is even with the best cover in the world the odd butterfly will get in from time to time and i've already seen a couple of caterpillars in there so you just literally have to go through there and just squish them off but the good thing about having something like this it's really easy to go in there um and and to check you know like i said i could easily see them so i just literally squished the few that i saw and um, but generally speaking most of them are staying out of there so i've got um some kale under here which we've been harvesting and i shall probably take some of that before i go home um, we had to do quite a lot of weeding recently so if you're not on top of your weeding um, it's worth just doing a like, little and often we never come up here and spend hours and hours up here um, obviously if you want to do that that's fine but we often come up here for an hour or so literally we put some jacket potatoes in the oven we have an hour and a half to do the filming and to do the jobs we need to do you know give or take so you know so you don't have to be spending hours and hours so we came up one day and we weeded the kale another day we weeded that you know you just have to do everything kind of like um to fit in around your routine as long as you're doing it at some point then that's fine as we come up here um we've got the black currants which are covered which if you haven't covered your black currants i definitely would this stuff's absolutely fantastic i've said in previous videos i bought myself 50 meters off amazon um, really reasonable and I cut it off when I, as and when I need it. I will put a link in the description if you do need any cover um, but this is a really easy and cheap way of covering stuff. Um, I've used other stuff in the past and it's quite brittle and um, it's quite expensive and this is this is by far the most reasonable. So as you can see the black currants are looking fantastic. Um, they're not there yet but they're getting there but absolutely bumper amounts of black currants there. 
Um, something else I'm going to be doing is I've soaked some peas for a couple of days and they've started to sprout. So I will be popping those into the ground before I go to get some lovely, they're actually, um, the little sugar snap ones, the ones you eat the whole pod. Um, I always soak them um, and let them sprout a little bit. I just find that they germinate much easier. Just, you know, just wet between a little bit of tissue. Just make sure that the tissue stays wet. Um, so you soak the peas overnight in water. You drain the water off and then you keep them between some moist tissue. And then once they've sprouted, I, I will then pop them out. So as we move up, um, if you've not um, got any of your own feed, then um, the comfrey feed is a really easy and cheap feed to make. We have got a video on that, which I'm sure my lovely assistant can attach if you want to make your own feed. Um, but that's a really fantastic and sustainable way and cheap way of feeding um, some of your plants that flower. Now, I hope that my um, the jobs that I'm doing are gonna inspire you to get out on your allotment and start to do some jobs yourself. If you've got any questions or queries or you're not sure about anything, then please do put it in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you.